Stephen. Celebrating supernatural living. Celebrating supernatural living. I wonder what is that all about? Our scripture for contemplation comes from Isaiah chapter 54. <clears throat> and here in Isaiah, it says, enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. This is the word of the Lord from the prophets. Father, speak to our hearts again as we come to set the tone for this worship hour and for all the other worship hours of the Sabbath through the rest of this year. Fill us now with the presence of your Holy Spirit and set our gaze on heaven. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Celebrating spiritual living. The Christian life is a supernatural life. It's an existing, rather it's an exciting adventure that begins with a life-changing supernatural birth. A spiritual birth. It begins with faith and continues as a work of faith. Living the Christian life, brethren and friends, this year can be a celebration. And I hope it will be a celebration. In Isaiah 54 and verse 2, the Lord called for Israel to expand their vision. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your, hurt your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cord. Strengthen your stakes. This, brethren, was uh, to be done in preparation for the Lord's restoration of Israel. You see, the prayer of our hearts should be for the Lord to stretch our vision, brethren, to stretch our vision, to enlarge, to enlarge our faith. And to expand our goal. Now, a faith vision, brethren, is one in which we visualize God, what God intends to do, and to act, brethren, in harmony with it. Hebrews chapter 11 records men and women who had faith vision. They saw by faith and obeying God's call. If we are to experience the adventure of believing God, brethren, we must do four things. Four things. Learn to think supernaturally, number one. Number two, learn to plan supernaturally. Number three, learn to pray supernaturally. And number four, learn to claim supernatural resources. Those are the four points that we will discuss in this message this evening. Remember, learn to think supernaturally. Learn to plan supernaturally. Learn to pray supernaturally. Learn to claim supernaturally. 
a whole lot of supernatural here. After all, Christianity is a supernatural religion. It's a spirit religion. Is it a wonder when someone say, I, I feel the spirit come upon me. Yes, because the Holy Ghost, that's the way he works. So let's get to number one. Learn to think supernaturally. Isaiah 55 and verse 9 says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The point is, brethren, we must strive to have the mind of Christ. We must strive to have the mind of Jesus. We must control our thoughts as an act of the will. So, you might be asking the $64 million question. How, how can we change our thought life? How can we change our thought life? First, we can saturate, brethren, our minds with God's word. Saturate our minds with God's word. Then we can follow the words of Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, where he says, Seek those things which are above. Set your minds on things above. Seek for those things above. That's pretty clear. In other words, think worthy thoughts. Think, faith, thought. Think, praise, thought. Think, worship, thought. Think, thanksgiving, thought. In fact, those are the thoughts we should have every time we go to the house of worship. If we go thinking in this manner, then after all, we can only agree with P.T. Forsyth, who says uh, uh, Christianity is organized, hallelujah, of the witnessing community. Because if we're going thinking worthy thoughts, if we're going thinking faith thoughts, if we're going thinking praise thoughts, if we're going thinking worship thoughts, if we're going thinking thanksgiving thoughts, how can the worship of God not be a joyous thing? Think about the attributes of God. Is goodness, is greatness. We're talking about the four G's. Is goodness, is greatness, is generosity, and is glory. Think supernaturally. Think supernaturally. Uh, think about who you are spiritually. No longer, <clears throat> no longer a servant, but a son. A daughter of God. No longer lost, but found. No longer an alien, but a citizen of the kingdom. A think of your spiritual heritage, the hope of your calling, the riches of Christ's glorious heritage, and the abundant greatness of the power for his believers. Think like children of the king. And after all, you are children of the king. My Bible says you are royal priesthood. That makes you prince and princesses. So when we begin to think these thoughts, brethren, we stretch our vision, we enlarge our vision, knowing God for who he is will change our lives. And that leads me to point number two. What is point number two? Learn to plan supernaturally. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, a supernatural planning includes our personal lives, our families, the church, our business, or whatever pertains to our need for planning. There is nothing, brethren, wrong with planning. 
Absolutely. Someone says, failure to plan is plan to fail. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 9 says, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. God himself, brethren, is a planner. He has a well thought out plan for the world from the first day until the last. Psalm 139 and verse 16 indicates divinely detailed planning for our lives. So let God reveal his vision to you. Search his word every day. And as you search his word, as you meditate, and as you pray, God will reveal his plans to you for you. Now, this becomes the basis of our faith. Then we set our goals so that they become his goals for us. Notice his, not ours. Prepare for the fulfillment of his goal. Our faith will be tested, brethren, but God is faithful when we trust and obey him. Hallelujah. First John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. He will confirm his direction for us and assure us through prayer of his will. Our obedience to God, brethren, requires supernatural planning. Planning by faith. Following God's plan. Have big plans. Yes, have big plans. Like when we ask God sometimes, we, we, we ask him for little tiny, tiny. We don't ask God for big things. As if God, he can barely afford to bless. Have big plans. Have God-sized plans. You see, the plans and goals God gives to people have two consistent elements. One, a wide scope of influence, and two, a lasting impact. God's goals for Adam and Eve, as outlined in Genesis 1.28, was to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. The big plan that God had for Adam and Eve. You see, God's goal for Abraham, according to Genesis chapter 1, uh, through verse 1 through 13, was not just to have a son, but to start a nation and to be a blessing to all people on earth. Amazing. Jesus' goal for the disciples in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 says, was for them to be witnesses in the power of the Holy Spirit from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. This is where we come in as a church. We preach this gospel to every kindred, nation, tongue, and people. You see, God-sized plans are big plans, supernatural plans. If our plans are so small that we can fulfill them ourselves, they are not God's size. Absolutely not. And God will not bless them. So I hope this year, God's people will follow the leader that he has sent to have God's size plan for the cities where the church exists. So that the word of God will be proclaimed with the Holy Ghost anointing and power. And that the church will reach out with its tentacles of love, of justice, of mercy. And the third angel's message. To reach the downcast. To reach the forgotten. To reach the marginalized. To reach the downtrodden. To reach the skid row bound, to reach those who are incarcerated, those are God sized plans. 
And we must trust God. We must trust God. Our plans are big when they need God's intervention. Dr. Jun Kim, evangelist and founder of the Korean Campus Crusade for Christ, had a vision to have a gathering of Christian training in Korea. And so his goal was to have 300,000 delegates. But brethren, more than 323,000 delegates came from 78 countries, including 15,000 pastors and evangelists. The largest evening service was attended by 1.5 million persons. This happened because uh, the Lord touched the heart of one man to believe God for great things. What will you trust God for as a people as we are still fresh into this new year? What will you trust God? What are the big plans that you have that you're going to lay before the Lord? And that leads us to point number three. Learn to pray supernaturally. Learn to pray supernaturally. You see, brethren, supernatural praying is found in John 14, 12 through 14. Greater works than these shall he do. You see, God gives us the faith to pray for something. And as we pray, brethren, he causes our faith to grow and to pray even Greater things for him. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 29. According to your faith, be it unto you. So if you have very little faith, very little blessing. Match is clear. According to your faith, be it unto you. So we can never ask God for too much if our hearts, brethren, and motives are pure. And if we pray according to the word and the will of God. Someone has said, whatever we vividly envision, whatever we ardently desire, whatever we sincerely believe and enthusiastically act upon will come to pass if there is a scriptural authority for it. In other words, we must let our plans be rooted in God's word. We must let the scripture dictate our plans. A Christian organization was praying for the Lord's miraculous provision of a certain sum of money. Brethren, within a few days, a man announced that he would give the ministry a gift of $1.1 million. And this was, this was unquestionably a supernatural provision. You know, there's our churches when we're doing projects from time to time. I would talk to the Lord about the funding, where does it come from? And you know, brethren, persons would knock on my door and they said, Pastor, the Lord has impressed upon my heart. I never went around begging anyone for anything. But I begged the Lord. I talked to the Lord about it. I think it was last week's Sabbath school lesson. You studied in the lesson how David was not allowed to build the temple, but he procured the provisions, and the people brought the silver, the gold, and the brass. They brought in everything, the lumber, everything, in enormous amount. And I remember persons came to the door and who just write those checks and said, Pastor, this is for this. I got a call one day. Somebody said, Pastor, I need to, can I meet with you? I need to talk to you on a Wednesday evening. I said, okay, or a Thursday evening. And I drove a hundred miles, come up the road because I don't know what the person wanted to talk to me about. But as we, we were there and we talked and we talked and we talked and we talked. Talk. Oh, Lord, I wonder what it is that they really want to talk because we're talking, but what is the true motive of their wanting to meet with the pastor to talk to the pastor? And they were talking. And eventually they said to me, Pastor, the reason why we want to meet with you because we want to know what it is that you're working on. What is it that you're working on? What is it that you need funding for? 
And they said, Pastor, here, we want to give the church $15,000. And they wrote the check out $15,000. I remember we were trying to, big plan, supernatural plan, supernatural prayer. We didn't have the money to truly finish off the ladies' restroom and the hallway downstairs and the fence that runs along the Norman roadside. And the dear saint said to me at the door one time, Pastor, I need to talk with you. Okay, can you give me a few minutes to finish greeting? And again, the person came to the office. And the person talked about a lot of things. And I listened and I showed interest. And again, I still try to, well, what is it that the person really wanted to talk to me about? What did they want to unburden to me about something that was on their heart? Well, they have done that, but is that truly the real motive? And then the person said, Pastor, what it is that you are working on and need to finish? And you need to fund it. And I told the person, and the person wrote a check for $17,000. A supernatural plan. The door of the church. I remember when I talked to the Lord about it. I came to the church some years ago. And when I spoke to the Lord, somebody came to me and said, Pastor, I want to do this thing. And wrote the first installment of a large check. God is wonderful. Supernatural plan. Brethren, when we trust God to do supernatural things and we pray supernaturally, the same thing when we pray for the healing of our brothers and our sisters, when we pray for the deliverance of a son or a daughter, we need to do so. We need to go on our knees and we need to, to, to demonstrate primitive godly faith and to trust God leads me to point number four, our final point. Learn to claim supernatural resources. So we're not ordinary people. No, we are extraordinary. Why? Because we have been engrafted into the family of God. Remember I said earlier, we are princes and princesses. That's who you are. You might not belong to the royal family in England. In the United States, we have no monarchy here. But the point is, we belong to our heavenly father, the sovereign of the universe. So we are not ordinary people. Once we have accepted Jesus Christ, you God has taken the ordinary and have made it an extraordinary vessel. You are an extraordinary vessel for God an extraordinary son, an extraordinary daughter. So walk with confidence, speak with confidence in the name of Jesus. Otherwise, we make a sacrifice of mockery. You see, our lives are joined with the one who spoke the world into existence. We belong to him who has been given all authority in heaven and in earth. He dwells in us in all his resurrection power. Hallelujah. And so we can claim Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 for our lives. I can do all things through him who strengthens me through Christ. Our faith may be small, but like a muscle, it will grow with exercise. If you are struggling this evening to trust God for more physical needs, for some more salvation, or for, for financial help, then brethren, pause. Pause to meditate and Whatever barrier to your fate you are facing right now. And remind yourself, remind yourself that God's power is available to you to accomplish the supernatural, to accomplish the extraordinary. If you're not trusting God, that is sin. 
confess your unbelief to him. And claim by faith is supernatural resources. And in conclusion this evening, brethren, we have seen what it means to celebrate supernatural living. This is God's will for our lives and for the church. So may 2023 be a year of supernatural living and victories in Christ Jesus as we worship him and dedicate our lives to him. Our Father in heaven, thank you this evening. Thank you, Lord, for showing us that truly we are not ordinary people, but through your supernatural power, you have transformed our lives and you want us to live supernatural lives. In our planning, in our praying, Lord, in our thinking, that we will represent you in all that we do and say and in our worship to you. And we thank you for bringing us to the gates of the Sabbath once more, that we will have a supernatural, worshipful experience in these sacred hours, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.